years ago, Dr. Stella Simpson initiated a single-center, randomized, blinded lung cancer trial to study the effect of the combination of two recently registered anti-cancer drugs. She has worked day and night on this trial. To her satisfaction, she has been able to recruit 76 patients into the trial out of the anticipated 120, with an additional 18 months to go. After her morning round in the ward, Dr. Simpson eats a quick breakfast in the hospital cafeteria and starts reading one of the scientific oncology journals she subscribes to. Dr. Simpson suddenly starts to cough and her face turns white. The clinical trial in the article she is reading is seemingly identical to her ongoing trial. However, the investigators have been able to prove the combination therapy to be slightly more effective than the standard treatment, with 55% of patients responding to the combination therapy. Dr. Simpson notes that the first author listed in the publication is one of her previous residential ward doctors who left two years ago for a large cancer center in Europe. What can I do, she wonders, and I have to complete my annual EC trial continuing review progress report today. Will the EC stop my current trial if I inform them about the results of the European trial? Dr. Simpson has experienced the worst day of her life. One of her previous internship doctors has copied her trial protocol and published the results in a renowned international cancer journal. Dr. Simpson reflects and then reminds herself that the stolen protocol is, in fact, not the final one. She amended genomics and proteomics methodologies into the protocol after that bandit left for Europe. Dr. Simpson writes in her EC continuing review report, To my great satisfaction, I have identified a recent publication based on an almost identical study design as ours. That trial showed some benefit of the combination therapy over the standard treatment, with 55% of the patients being responders. This means that my patients most likely benefit from being participants in our trial. Moreover, our trial is unique compared to the published trial since we have access to important biomarkers, thus allowing us to identify the characteristics of responders slash non-responders. The EC chair writes in his reply letter that the trial must continue since it is clearly beneficial for the participating patients and that the protocol has an even higher scientific value than first anticipated. The chair also reflects on the excellent patient recruitment rate. Note, emerging knowledge about a test medication can provoke a reassessment of the value of a clinical trial. Newly published results of other similar trials can have both positive and negative effects. The EC continuing review report is one of the regular points for reassessment.